Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Victoria Physics. Today I'm going to discuss something a bit different uh, because uh, it's a lockdown now and we are unable to have regular practical classes in college. So I'm just trying to give you a glimpse of as to how uh, an inverting amplifier practically works. Uh, and this is uh, simply a virtual experiment to make you understand the operation of an inverting amplifier. So let us begin our um, construction of this circuit. So we need, uh, this is an uh, inverting uh, amplifier, as you can see, I guess you remember all this part uh, we have discussed previously. So this is the inverting terminal and this is the non-inverting terminal. We have two resistances, R1 and R2, which are used for negative feedback connections. And this is the input pin uh, where we are applying the signal, that is because it is inverting amplifier. If we were doing a non-inverting amplifier, then we would have uh, given the signal in this non-inverting terminal. And the gain comes out to be of this nature as uh, minus RF by R1. In college, we have done taking RF as uh, 10 kilo ohm and R1 as 1 kilo ohm. And in set two, we have done RF as 22 kilo ohm and R1 as 1 kilo ohm. So just uh, begin our circuit, okay? So just right click. And you have a place components. So from there, you, you select this to all groups and go below and scroll to find op amp. Here we are. Now come to this part in the component part. Uh, type 741, which is the IC number of op amp that we are using, and click OK. Place your op amp somewhere around here. Close this part. <clears throat> From the figure, you can see we require two resistances. So again, click this part, go to place component. And now you go to basic. Over here, you'll find resistors. So just click OK. You get a resistor. I place somewhere around here. You need another resistor, so you just place OK. I place that resistor also somewhere around here. I don't know, I'm just keeping uh, these things because I'll arrange them later on. Close this part, we don't need any more resistances. Now, what else we need? We need uh, an input signal part and also uh, an output part. And so beside you'll find your function generator. So click that. Bring your function generator. Somewhere around here. Okay. Then I need a oscilloscope. You have a four channel oscilloscope, but we don't require that for this purpose. So just take a two channel oscilloscope and place it. Okay, let us begin our connections. Uh, well, uh, from this function generator, we take the connection to R1, connect that R1 to 
this terminal because you over here see that input is in terminal two and over there we have the signal and it's passing through R1 which is connected to V1 at one end and uh, to the inverting terminal at the other. Next, uh, I need a ground because this terminal three is being grounded. So again, go to place component. Go to sources. And scroll down here. Okay, we found ground. Place okay. Place the ground somewhere around here. Close this part. Okay, connect your, connect this pin. To ground. Fine. So this part is complete up till now. So next we'll do what that <clears throat> will take the common connection and will connect it to ground. <clears throat> Over here, the feedback resistance is there, but let us first connect this part. Uh, we require to see the uh, output. So channel A is connected to the input part. I'm connecting that to the input and channel B I connect to the output, fine. This two part would be connected to the ground. So just connect that to ground, connect this as well. Okay, fine. Now we connect the feedback resistance that is R2 over here, which in the figure you can see is RF. So I connect this part to terminal two over here and the other part to output. I hope up till now it's quite clear. We are left with one important thing that is uh, our uh, supply voltages, which should be connected to pin number seven and pin number four. So click again to place components. Okay, go to sources. Okay, it, okay, it was in sources only. Scroll down, try to find out VDD. Click OK, place VDD over here. Close. We require VCC as well. So click VCC, place it somewhere around here. Close this part. So we got VCC. Fine. Now connect this VCC to pin number seven. Connect uh, VDD to pin number four. Okay. So this is the complete picture of uh, the inverting amplifier over here, as you can see. Now, just you have to make some changes in the arrangement over here. Click on this, make this frequency to be around say as 100, okay? And the amplitude to be as one. I'm reducing this because since it is a virtual uh, process um, and the oscilloscope may not be showing you all the ranges. So, and I'll change this to say around, uh, say, two kilo, no, say so around two kilos for the time being. Okay, make this as two kilo. I just need to see the gain, so I'm just giving that two kilo. 
Similarly, change this to say around uh, four kilo. So if you calculate the gain, then it comes out to be four by two, that is minus two, that is it would be twice, it would be double the input but in a negative uh, phase. So this is it, I guess. Uh, oh, sorry, I need to change the VCC part. Make this to be as 12, 12 volt, positive 12 volt, and VDD as negative 12. Okay, so we are set now. Click on this part. This is your oscilloscope part, which will show you the simulation. I place it somewhere around here so that you can see the simulation or somewhere around here. Okay, then you can click on run. So you can find the input and the output are shown in this figure, but for you all to understand it in a better way, make this scale division to be as one, and also make the scale division of channel B to be one. So, so this is my output. Well, this channel, is the input channel and this one is the output channel as you can find it is twice that of the input because uh, the output has passed two squares and the input has passed one square uh, the value uh, accordingly uh, i hope you know how to see the measurements in uh, in a cro and oscilloscope uh, so uh, well i can change something out here so that it would be a bit better for you all to understand uh, the channel B, click on this part. The channel B is connected to the output, okay? So uh, click on this part and go to properties, click on color, fine. And you can change the color according to your wish and save as okay, apply, Okay, and now run your output. So I guess you are able to understand what I did. So your red line is your input curve and the output curve is shown by your yellow line. So it is actually, if you can see here, it's 180 degree out of phase with respect to the input. So thank you all for watching this. You can practice at home. If you want this Multisim uh, installation is very easy. And uh, until we begin our classes normally, just try to practice this. I'm going to um, save this part. I'll show you the saving part. Go to file. Click as save as. You can name anything of your wish. So I just save it as virtual experiment one. Save it. So thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then do. Please like it and share it among your friends so that other students uh, get benefited. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay healthy.